Is media buying dead? Back in 2016, I was senior ad ops at a place called Hyphen, and we had some fun tech that sat on top of Facebook and a few other platforms that was really great, and we got to automate a lot of the workflow. And, you know, I was sitting in accounts like Starbucks and Pizza Hut and Papa John's at the same time, which is a wild conflict of interest, and Joybird and Progressive Insurance and MGM Hotels, and the list goes on and on and on, brought TRX to market, et cetera, et cetera. The point is though, I learned some extraordinarily valuable lessons. And the following year, I got a gig working for a small shop called 310 Nutrition, who in the year prior had gone from 10 million to 18, which is phenomenal. But after joining in the subsequent year and a half or so, I got them from 18 million to 100 million. And I learned a lot while doing that. And to be fair, I've shared a lot of that with you from the one campaign ad account and dynamic creative testing. And I've talked about some other things in theory, but I realize I haven't shown them to you. These are things that have really only been privy to the folks inside the Facebook ads MBA program. And I realized like, why gatekeep? Why not just show you two of the most powerful and super easy to do things that I have on basically every single account. And for some context, once I got these things right, I mean, I was leaving 310 once our Shopify hit $100,000 that day. Like every day, just like if we had 100K, screw it. It's like two o'clock in the afternoon, I'm done. And I got through season one through seven of Game of Thrones at my desk in like three weeks because I really wasn't doing any work anymore. The point here is, a lot of the button pushing that used to make really great media buyers exceptional and rare, we can have the machine do for us and it's free. And really it's all about business development and there's a lot of other stuff. So, you know, I've talked a lot about all you need is the one campaign to easily get to seven, eight figures as a business. And we've talked about dynamic creative testing being an extraordinarily superior way of testing creatives and creating profitable scaling margin to ultimately grow your business. But what I haven't shown is how to have Facebook automatically optimize for your absolute best ads and how to have Facebook automatically scale your budget so that the only thing you ever have to do outside of hitting refresh with a nice serotonin hit is launch a new creative test maybe once or twice a month and take an action every couple of weeks. Outside of that, Facebook is basically autopilot. So if you're working right now more than an hour or two a week in your Facebook ad account, if you're lost in the amount of moves that you should make at any given time, if you don't have confidence in a plan for what you should be doing, or if you're afraid of making the wrong move, or if you're spending all day still day trading, this video is perfect for you. And if you're one of those people that says, look, I'm still an ABO guy. I'm still a girl that loves interest groups and I still use, you know, Advantage Plus and cost caps and, and, and lookalikes and retargeting, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine because today's video is still perfect for you. And my favorite part about this is say you do all that stuff, but you also set up the one campaign like we've talked about so often here. And if you want more on that, I'll link a video down below to the one campaign build I did for Alex Ramosi's $100 million leads event. Like I literally take it from empty screen to completely built out ad account. And you know, there's no gatekeeping here. It's 100% transparency. And if you've hired an ad agency and you think that legitimately they're worth the five, 10, 20, $50,000 a month that you're paying them and you know that you can't get out of your contract because they'll sue you. How much work are they really doing? And if they're doing a lot of work, how much of it is unnecessary? And how much of it is actually creating harm? Because I'm gonna help you right now in this video, set up a couple of things. I'm gonna show you every step of the way I'm gonna share my screen so that you legitimately don't have to do 99% of the work that a media buyer is supposed to do because we just don't have to do it anymore. And at the end of this video, we'll come back to the question we started with. And I'm super curious to hear your answer. And if you don't mind, go down to the comments section below and tell me, yes, it's dead. No, it's not. And here's why, because I have my own opinions, but I'd love to know yours. And I think everybody else would too. So with that being said, let's um, take a quick little break and we'll come back 
with me sharing my screen and showing you how to build a rule to automatically optimize your Facebook ads so you'll never have to turn ads on or off ever again. And how to automatically scale your budget so that you'll never have to guess or play catch up or touch them in any way ever again. Which basically means that 90% of the work that you're supposed to do is something that you're never actually going to have to do ever again. And I'm gonna show you how to do it for free. All right, take a moment and we'll come right back. So if you want to learn about all my SOPs, my standard operating procedures, my frameworks for success and all of the other stuff, like we're just scratching the surface today, check out the link down below to join the Facebook Ads MBA program. It's the single best investment you could legitimately make in the future of your skill set and your business. And with that being said, let's open it up and dive on in today because this one's going to be special. So the first thing we're gonna do today is create a rule. So I've gone to rules, create a new rule. We're gonna do a custom rule and we're gonna get started right from there. Now the first rule we're gonna make is called the auto optimizer rule. And basically what this rule says is that if any ad is just doing poorly enough that we might turn it off ourselves lately, then we're gonna let the system do it. Now I've explained this rule previously in other videos, but to recap, Let's say our target CPA in Facebook is 50 bucks. And when we've gone to our ecosystem ROAS and we're looking at incremental lift, maybe that really means a $32 cost per acquisition and that gives us a margin, whatever it happens to be. Remember attribution is complete nonsense, but every single channel basically reports at the same level of error as long as your media mix stays the same. So you can say, this is what I need my number to be on the platform to look good. At broad. Now, if you're using lookalikes and retargeting, obviously that number is going to be different because that's far less incremental. So while it might look like a 32, really it's closer to like a 40, and then there's a whole bunch of other nonsense. But for the purpose of this conversation, let's say our target is 50 bucks. Now, what we want to do is take a look at all of our ads that are currently live. And again, I'm going to assume that you've got your one campaign build, but if you're running a bunch of audiences with a bunch of ads or God forbid using ABO or something like that. This will still absolutely work. So what we have to do first is identify the business rule, which is my target is 50. Now I know I'm going to get some ads cheaper than that. And if I look at the 4PI analysis of those ads, they're probably going to have a higher daily frequency with a higher CPM and odds are they're going to get less spend. And remember, uh, if they don't get as much spend, it's not because Facebook is dumb. Why aren't they spending on it? It's because it's a retargeting ad, even at broad. And what that means is we also want a better efficiency. So we're going to get some 40s and we're going to get some 60s, but we need to average at a 50. So let's say what we're willing to do is have any ad within 10% of that is okay. But by the time you start slipping into 56, 58, 60, et cetera, you're just not doing good enough for us and we need to turn it off. Now the trick to this is some ads are gonna have good days and some ads are gonna have bad days and that's totally fine. So let's start setting this up and we're gonna go through several of the business rules for this rule before we get started. Number one, we're gonna make sure that we include a filter at the campaign name so that only campaigns with a specific string of characters are eligible for this rule, but that all campaigns could potentially be eligible. So we're gonna build inclusive and exclusive logic into our automated rule Relying on the nomenclature of the ad. I know this kind of sounds difficult, but trust me, this will make complete sense as soon as we do it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, I don't care about lifetime results. And I know that yesterday is a terrible data point. So let's look at the last seven days. 
as our overall optimization and analyzation window. And the last thing, we need to make sure that you've actually spent enough for us to legitimately care. I mean, the honest truth is, if our target is 50 and you've spent 80 and only have one sale, I shouldn't turn you off because with the next $5, $10 spent, maybe you get a second sale and now your cost per goes from 80 down to 45. If you don't have enough volume to legitimately make this move, then it's unrealistic to expect this to legitimately work. I see so many folks saying, well, it's just not profitable, just not profitable, and then one day is great. You have to rely on the volume of the data here. So for the purpose of today's conversation, we're gonna say that roughly speaking, we're gonna want to know that by the time we've invested enough for you to see half a dozen sales, you should be within 10% of our target. Now, I'm just using that because the math will be really easy when we get to it, but that could easily be 20 sales or 100 sales. There's a barometer for success, meaning more or less, in the last week, if you've spent enough to get six sales, are you within 10% of what our target cost for a sale is? And if not, we're gonna turn you off. And then we should decide when to turn these ads back on. A good rule of thumb for me is, if over the last seven days, you've spent less than my target CPA, I'm willing to turn that ad back on. And so basically, here's the parameters. We need the campaign name to contain a string of characters to make sure that that campaign is eligible for this rule. And then that ad has to spend enough money over the last seven days for us to say, by the time you've gotten to this number, you should have at least this many sales. Now, for today's example, we're gonna take a target of a $50 cost per acquisition. And we know that we're allowing 10% worse than that in that initial time period. Remember, our target cost is 50 bucks. And we're saying that you have to save within at least 10% of that, so max is 55 times six transactions. Well, that's $330. By the time we've spent $330, your cost as an ad your efficiency better be at 55 bucks or less. And if not, we're gonna turn you off. And then we can always build another rule that says any ads that are also inside the same campaign that are also eligible for rule number one, once they drop below a $50 CPA, let's turn that ad back on. And now we've got a rule that will automatically cycle through all of the ads that we have. And the fun thing is, these numbers today I'm picking are more or less kind of arbitrary and subjective. But for you, you might have six or eight ads inside of your winner's ad set in your one campaign or across a million things if you're not using a consolidated build. Now, if that's the case, this means that if some ads are gonna get budget and then they're gonna get turned off and other ads will get budget because those other ads have been turned off. And basically what happens is more of your money is being spent on the ads that either haven't spent enough yet to know if they're good or bad, or they've been performing well enough to still be eligible for spend. What's happening here is we are scaling the budget towards our more efficient ads. We're scaling our efficiency. We're making our money work harder for us without spending more. And instead of using silly things like cost caps, we're actually letting Facebook spend on the entire daily budget, but it's only going to ads that are doing well enough for us. This is something that those scammers and clowns that say you should use cost caps all the time. Clearly they don't know how Facebook works and they haven't been in the weeds for years, otherwise they'd be showing you this, but they're not because their interest is to scare you and sell you on things. My interest is to help you be successful so that you don't need them. All right. So let's go ahead and build this rule because we're gonna do it in like two minutes, if that. And the only reason it's gonna take that long is because I'm going to explain every step of the way. So let's start. Auto optimizer. And we're gonna say $50 CPA target and $55 CPA threshold at 6X. I'm gonna just knock that in there, 330. Cool. 
Now here comes the fun part. First, we're gonna apply this rule to all active ads in any campaign. It's totally fine. We want everything to be eligible because we're gonna use inclusive and exclusive logic to make sure that the right ads are eligible and the ones that aren't the right ads, this rule will never apply to them. So let's get to that right now. The first thing we're gonna do here is type in name. Now our campaign name needs to include auto optimizer. Simple. Now the campaign name needs to include in this case, hashtag auto optimizer. And if it doesn't, well then this rule won't apply. And if it does, this rule will apply to every ad in that campaign, inclusive, exclusive logic using nomenclature. Second, we're gonna come in here and say spent. Well, we need to have spent at least $330, right? And that's right in the name of the rule. Next, we're gonna say our cost per purchase here. I know that you could use uh, cost per result, but I find that cost per result glitches a lot and cost per whatever your conversion event doesn't glitch ever. So let's go with that. It's 55 bucks. Now there's this lifetime impressions, things that come up. I just kind of kill that anyway. And time range, let's go last seven days. So let's quickly review. Our rule name is auto optimizer. Okay, this is one of our auto optimizer rules. We have a $50 CPA target and a $55 CPA threshold at 6X, which is $330, which is six times 55 bucks. Our rule applies to every active ad in the account. And the action of the rule is to turn that ad off. Now, in order to make sure that we don't apply this to literally every ad, no matter what, the campaign has to contain hashtag auto optimizer in the name to make those ads eligible for the rule. If it doesn't contain that, this rule won't apply. It'll simply pass them by. Next, we set our spend to over 330 and our cost per purchase over 55. And we're not using cost per result. We're defining the conversion event. And then our time range, seven days. We're gonna hit continuously and hit create. And that's quite literally all we need to do to make this rule work. All right, stick around and I'll show you how to make an auto scaling rule next. All right, so now that we have our ads automatically turning on and off based on a certain threshold, so we're scaling our budget towards our best ads without even having to scale our actual budget. We're just changing the spend allocation, which will scale our efficiency and make our average cost per acquisition come down over and over while also training the machine to see more data points below our average cost, which means that every new transaction is more likely to come below that line because we're training the machine to understand what better quality people look like. And we're driving them at a higher volume, even though we're not spending more money because we're getting all of those conversions for a lower price because we're scaling our efficiency. We're training the machine to be better while it's focusing on giving people the best user experience and anything that falls outside of allowable gets turned off. And over time, we can even reduce that threshold if we wanna make our money work harder and harder for us without having to increase our budget. Now, if you're in a situation where you can spend more money and you've begun to scale your efficiency, improving your profitable scaling margin, well, let's set up an automated rule that will automatically do that for you so that you never have to touch budgets ever again. All right, let's do it. So first step, create a custom rule. Awesome. Now, like the last one, let's discuss the business rules that we're going to write today. So our business rule here that we're gonna automate is that if our overall campaign, or for you ABO folks, our ad set, if it is coming in at better than our target cost, let's increase the budget because we've now created a margin with which we can spend into. We can reinvest some of our profits into the growth of our business automatically, which is extraordinarily high confidence and completely automatable. So for this exercise, what we're gonna do is say that we need at least a 5% margin between our target and where we're coming in. And if that happens, then we're willing to spend 5% more money. 
Now this is what we call the total loss investment, meaning that if I added 5% and got no more sales, it would still come in at okay. And the beauty of this is we can continue to push that budget more and more and more because remember, only the best ads are gonna to continue to get spent, so our average cost is gonna to continue to come down. And as we push the budget, we're gonna get even more data points on top of just being more efficient. And the machine is seeing all of those data points and making optimization decisions on its own right to continue to optimize as well. So we have a compounding effect of more data means we're, the machine is getting smarter. We have the compounding effect of more efficiency means our dollar works harder and harder. And we have the compounding effect of as long as we're more efficient enough, we're gonna spend more and more money. That's three layers of compounding interest that we're stacking on top of each other. That's incredible. This is the secret to making Facebook super easy. So the business rule here, again, we need to be at least 5% more efficient than our target. Now our target was $50, so 5% more efficient than that, $47.50. Also, we don't want to apply this to every single campaign. We only want it to apply to the campaigns where this is something that we're okay with. Now for the purpose of this conversation today, I'm assuming you're setting the budget at the campaign level, but if you're not, if you're doing it at the ad set level, you can rewrite this rule to say ad sets instead of campaigns when it comes to where we're gonna increase the budget. And then again, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're looking at a large enough data set that one good day or one bad day does not inform the machine. We are rounding out the curves of uncertainty so that we have extreme confidence in every step that we're taking. So we're gonna do another seven day window. So let's go ahead and build this rule. Rule name, PGS, short for performance gate scaling. This is gonna be plus 5% if our CPA is under $47.50. And we're gonna do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now the reason we're not doing it every single day is because we could have a really great weekend and maybe a bunch of bad days. And also, remember that Facebook doesn't exist in isolation. We're going to have to understand the halo effect that this has on search and on email. And for those of you who say, well, 5% isn't a lot, that's crazy. 5% three times a week will double your budget in 30 days. If you do this, in 90 days, your $1,000 budget will be over 5,000. Do you understand the compounding value of that? How big you could be in a very short amount of time. And because we're not hockey sticking the business, we can also manage our cash flow and our inventory and our human resources. And we're also not spending into a whole bunch of results because yesterday was really good or we had a solid three days and then we had 10 days of terrible results. No, we're moving slowly with a effort to leverage compounding interest because that's infinitely more valuable than doubling the budget after you had a good day and then cutting it after you had a bad day where you're just playing the lottery, reacting to improper information that already happened. If you take incomplete and out of context data from the past to try to predict the future, you're going to fail. This eliminates all of that. So we've got a rule set up. Now we're gonna apply this rule to all active campaigns Assuming again that you're setting the budget at the campaign level. Our action is gonna to be to increase the daily budget by 5%. Now for the purpose of this conversation, let's assume our daily budget is $1,000. And we don't want it to just run away. So let's say when you get to 2,000, we're gonna stop it. And look, you can always come back in and edit this thing to say 3,000 or 5,000 or 50,000. And believe me, I've taken ad accounts doing this exact thing from 500 a day to 50,000 a day in a couple of months. And you absolutely can too. Now our action frequency, we're gonna say once daily. And I know you're saying, but Charlie, you just said we're only gonna do it three times a week. Yeah, and I'm gonna show you how to do that here too in a minute. Now our conditions. For those playing along the home game, you've been paying attention, we're gonna type in name. Now our name needs to contain hashtag PGS. Now for what it's worth, I like throwing in a character like a hashtag or something because the string of characters of PGS probably won't occur, but it might. And we don't want to accidentally have something be eligible or ineligible for a rule. So let's be extraordinarily specific using a string of characters that will not occur unless we want them to. Next, 
We're gonna say our cost per purchase, not cost per result, but cost per purchase because we're being extraordinarily specific on the conversion event. Because we don't want it to fire just because our view contents are cheap or our cost per lead is cheap or we're actually driving the subscription. No, we wanna be very specific. If our cost per purchase is smaller than 47.5, this rule should fire. Now this is enough information. Last thing we need to do is make sure that we are only looking at the last seven days. Awesome. Now, we're only gonna let this be eligible on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because we want to understand the impact of our marketing. We don't want a bad data set, and even if that means a really phenomenal day because maybe you sent out an email that makes your Facebook look artificially good. We wanna round out those curves of uncertainty to maximize our confidence. And we're only gonna do this on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we hit custom, and then we hit Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we hit create, and we're done. Let's do this in reverse to say if our ads aren't doing well enough, let's reduce the budget. And what you'll notice when you're running ad sets that aren't broad is that you create audience fatigue and you're creating ad fatigue. And if you do nothing, those ads will just get worse over time. And if you're using broad, those ads will only get better over time. But say you're managing, your one campaign is set up and you've got all this legacy stuff of like, I followed all the hacks and bad information out there in the world. I'm using ABO and interest groups and cost caps and lookalikes and retargeting and you know, whatever else other nonsense is out there, Advantage Plus campaigns, for, please. But here is how we can say, okay, look, do what you do. But over time, when you get worse, cause you will, I'm gonna spend less on you. And the fun part is as we spend less there and broad only ever gets better, eventually broad's gonna be the only place we're actually spending any money. And at that point, we can just turn all the other junk off and we can move into Facebook post 2017 and we can start using it properly in a way that takes us less than an hour a week and it'll automatically scale for us. And we can launch a new creative test maybe once or twice a month if we need to using 322 ads at our broad campaign, set up in a CBO. But let's set up the rule that protects us. It's the inverse of the rule we just did. So this is also gonna be performance gate scaling, so PGS. This rule though is gonna be minus 5%. If CPA is over 52.5, which is 5% more than our target. And we're also gonna say this is a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday rule. Because again, we could have a really good day. We could also have a really bad day. We don't want one data point or two data points to inform our overall business direction. Let's round out the curves of uncertainty so that we can be more confident. So what we're gonna do is apply this rule to all active campaigns. And again, if you're using ABO, God forbid, you can put this at the ad set level instead of the campaign level. Now here we can go action, decrease budget by 5%. And we can have no minimum daily floor because by the time you get down to wherever that minimum daily floor is, you should just turn the thing off. So we're gonna have this happen once a day. And our rules, again, we're gonna say the name has to contain hashtag PGS, right? To make it eligible. And then the next rule is our cost per purchase. In this case, we're doing e-com, but this could very well be leads. This could very well be subscriptions. This could very well be app downloads, etc. Let's say that's over 52.5. Our time range, last seven days. And we're gonna make this happen on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now we have pretty much everything set up here and we're pretty good to go. Now for me personally, I like to get rid of this. And our minimum daily floor is $1 because you can't put zero apparently. And that's it, create. Boom. And now we're done. You now have the three rules that will automatically cycle your ads and increase the budget where your ads are good and decrease the budget where your ads are ultimately just not performing anymore because you probably created ad fatigue. And you never have to touch your budgets again. You never have to turn ads on or off ever again. And don't forget to take that other rule that says turn the ad on if the budget is below this and it's eligible. I can show that again, but I don't want this to be like an hour long video. Uh, just literally do the thing we did in reverse. Just say it's turned on and the budget is below a number. Ask me down in the comments if you need me to make that video for you, because I will. And again, these are all things that so far have only really ever been inside the Facebook Ads MBA program, but I feel like why gatekeep? Why not make it super accessible for everybody? If you look down below, you're gonna see links to that Alex Ramosi video that we talked about before. You're also gonna see links to the Facebook Ads MBA program, which is the single best investment that you could be making. Right now, if you hired an agency for less money than you would pay them over the next two, three months, you could 
2X your business and instead of renting their expertise in a way that you're trying to trust a business that doesn't care about you to be the reason that your business grows, instead of making that absolutely ridiculous decision, you could own this knowledge in a way that takes you less than an hour a week to fundamentally change your future. Now, it might not sound like a big deal now, but extrapolate the next year, next two years, next three years. How much success do you not wanna have? Because instead of investing in yourself, you're renting expertise from other people that don't care about you. Now, I know you could be literally anywhere on the internet right now, and you've chosen to be here, and for that, I wanna say thank you for listening on the podcast. Please go ahead and drop five stars. If you're listening on the podcast, you should definitely go to the YouTube channel and watch it, because this one is highly visual. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe, hit the button, ring the bell, do all the good stuff. And until next time, I'll see you on the internet. Bye.